Hey, True Believers England team here with another, I used to call them Marvel vs. DC, but I've got so many independent comic books in here now. It's basically one big review video from the worst to the best. I've got basically the entire month of April in this one video right here. I didn't read a lot because we were moving. I've got a lot to catch up on, so you're going to see some of these older books mixed in with the newer ones as we go on, but I want to do these... Um, every week so hopefully uh, that'll be a thing anyway you know what that's all you need to know uh one star books are horrible two star books are bad three star books are average four star books are good and five star books are excellent although there are no five star books today i think you'll be surprised about some of the entries here and where they place so kick back relax let's get this party started once again the one star books are horrible they should be avoided at all cost the only one star book is the Hellfire Gala official guide, which basically shows you all of these artist gowns and everything that they're going to be wearing to this particular gala. And they are freaking horrible. Uh, it's, it's this kind of thing. And they talk about what makes them beautiful and everything. I think Mystique here is one of the better ones. There are some incredibly bad ones. I'm almost willing to recommend this in the same vein I would recommend the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So bad it's good. The two-star books are just merely bad. Maybe they had something saving them from being horrible, horrible. Captain America number 28. This is the infamous uh, Jordan Peterson issue where they compare Jordan Peterson to Red Skull and all that kind of stuff. Even without that in there, this is a bad story. It's just poorly written. The, the art is eh. But it's about this, there's this one assassin girl who beats up like men 50 times their size while recruiting poor young white guys to go off and be terrorists. Kind of ridiculous. And number 22, we have Witch Blood. I know I was doing a countdown before I even brought it in. And this book, unfortunately, fails because, the well, the art isn't great, but the writing really fails it because the unattended consequences of wanting and being so enamored with wanting to tell what is happening, you don't bother telling us who it's happening to. Yes, we have a young witch. That's all you know about her. And she's the good guy because the story starts off with her. There's just very little in the way of story. It's all plot, and unfortunately, it's not very interesting to boot. And number 21, we have the other history of the DC Universe, number three, starring Katana. Now, I did a full review of this, so by all means, please go over and check that out on the channel. Uh, the short version of this is basically the same as the other two other history books, and that is is that they are so interested in writing a caricature that there is no character. That and really it's not about Katana at all. It's just about prejudice and racism. I got hided, by the way, over my review of this. And yes, there's a full-length review of Green Lantern number one. A lot of you guys are fans. I was not. And I really do not like the Teen Lantern characters written here. That's not to say she can't be written well somewhere else. It's just right here. No, I'm sorry. And I am getting a little bit tired of seeing the Guardian smacked around by lesser characters and everything just to make that lesser character look good. It is a practice. I, I think that they need to stop. Coming in at 19, we have Ha Ha number, what is this, number four? Wow, I've sung the praises of this book, but here I think this is just a, a mess. We see a floating red balloon, and inside that balloon there's a trapped birthday clown. They don't explain anything. It's basically just one big acid trip of a book, and frankly, it wasn't a trip I wanted to be on. And I was like, okay, it's time to end this comic, and I'm very glad that eventually it did. Okay, now, the three-star books are average. Now, that just means I either didn't feel anything one way or the other, good or bad, or I did like it, but just not enough to put my reputation on it. Alrighty, so number 18, I put The Flash. I've been liking Joshua Williams' run. Unfortunately, this isn't Joshua Williams anymore. And it ends up being yet another Flash time travel story that... It just didn't hit me in any way, shape, or form. I'm afraid at this point, because of uh, DC Comic Costs, I dropped it because of this issue, as a matter of fact. It absolutely did not thrill me, did not interest me at all, and that, to me, is a very sad thing. Shadecraft number one at number se at number 17, we have Shadecraft number one, should say it like that, which is an okay story, but there's a twist that is 
seen coming from a mile away, and unfortunately, the writer seems to have based every bit of the book on that. Uh, it, uh, it feels very light, very what I would call Dixie Cup deep up until the point of the twist, but since we've already seen it, we're playing catch-up with the main character. At number 16, we have Batman Scooby-Doo Mysteries number one, which I thought was a fun little um, a fun romp. We know what Scooby-Doo brings to the table. We know what Batman, at least Batman 66, by the way, guys, make no mistake, that's what's going on here, is uh, what he brings to the table. So there's a lot of things to find entertaining and enjoying, but it's a very simple story. So uh, enter with caution, ladies and gentlemen. Vampirella Purgatory, issue number two. So I'm enjoying it. That That is happening. I don't know if I would put my reputation on it, though. I don't know if I would actually say, hey, guys, you should go and buy this. It's, it's at this point, okay. I actually thought the first issue was good, but this one took a little dive in quality here just to be, eh. I read it and it didn't offend me. So I guess, you know, that's where we stand right here. At number 14 is Cult of Dracula, which really is a book like, look, I read this book and I'm like, do I like this? I don't know. There are a lot of things wrong with Cult of Dracula. The character, uh, her, the, uh, uh, they're playing with the Dracula characters. The way they're presenting the Cult of Dracula and everything is interesting. But then they kind of lose it with a lot of modern day dialogue, with a lot of the, uh, with a lot of how the characters act and react to each other. So, on one hand, I'm like, oh, wow, okay, this is really kind of cool. On the other end, mm, it's like great idea, poor execution kind of situation. Either way, I will be here for issue number two. I want to see where this goes. Batman 107 was all right. And unfortunately, they raised their price on Batman. So Saul Wright is just not good enough. Um, I'm, inter- I'm entertained enough. But as I said, I want a Batman book again, and this is not providing it. There's there are some decent things here. I like the fact at least that they're letting Batman be a detective, but just not nearly enough, gang. There's still way too much of the bull crap that's going around on it. All right, gang, at number 12, we have Ha Ha number three. This is the mime issue. There's a lot of silent pages here, which I like sequential art stories. I do. That being said, because it's such a short read, If I did recommend it, it would have to be with extreme caution. Understand that you'll be paying your $4 for something you'll probably breeze through in less than five minutes unless you're somebody who stares at art. I enjoyed it. At least that much I can say honestly. At number 11, we have Shadow Doctor number one. Now, I may be being mean to this comic book because I'm not recommending it. I've seen this story before. It, David Duchovny did a movie about this where you have a doctor who can't find work anywhere else, so he goes to the mob. So I don't know how much of a retread this book is going to be. It's said to be based on a true story of a guy's father, so maybe it'll play out. But right now, I might be being mean to it, but I still have to put it in the three stars at number 11. Two Moons, number two, at number 10. They start, it starts the top 10 here, and I like it. It's okay. It still has me questioning the fact that it seems to be morally equivalenting the North and the South in the Civil War. It, granted, there's some fantastical elements to it, and it's based on those that I like it as much as I did, and I do think the writing is strong. It's just that one little premise I have a hard time getting my head around. The four-star books are just solidly good, and I am proud to recommend them to you. Crime Syndicate number two. Starro is invading the Crime Syndicate's world, and this is basically them fighting him off. Uh, Ultraman is uh, taken over by... That's basically their version of Superman taken over by the villain, and it's just one big freaking fight scene while we see what Owlman, basically Batman that's been untethered, can do to defeat... Starro, it really is just a straight up fun book. At number eight, we have Berserker number two. Now, I was not a fan of the first issue. I've spoken out about it. Uh, I know I was in the minority on it. This absolutely makes up for it. We do get backstory. We do get character. We understand him a little bit more. It's not just a rage murder fest that the first book was. I like this. 
I got to tell you, I'm in. I'm in now. Give me issue number three, and hopefully the quality is the same as number two and not number one. At number seven, we probably have the ver- the first of the surprises, and that is Batman Catwoman, issue number four by Tom King. I've been enjoying this. Catwoman flat out murdered the Joker, and her daughter, who has kind of taken the reins of the Bat Batman, or Batwoman in this case, is trying to find out who did it and kind of knows, kind of knows who did and is trying to figure out a way around it. It's just really good storytelling. Surprise, surprise by Tom King here. At number six, we have Terry Moore's Serial, which is a mini series. I think maybe three people are reading. But in this issue, okay, in the first issue, this guy gets killed by a serial killer. The second issue, the cops are over at the wife's house of the murdered man. And this young girl, this young woman, I should say, who uh, unfortunately is stuck in a girl's body, kind of is pissed about it so she goes searching for who may have actually killed the husband because the cops only seem to be interested in why the wife did it and uh yeah basically that's the whole story setting up up that it's very well written i do like the art it's black and white line drawn very simple but very entertaining story at number five i have joker harley criminal insanity number eight now i was told this was a 12 issue mini series or maxi series and i hope so But number eight is very much written as if it was ending the series. And if that's the case, while I like the story, that's not a that's not exactly an acceptable ending. It very much is left open and doesn't really resolve or solve anything. If this is the last issue, I may drop this a few bits, but I don't know. As it stands, it still is a very well written, very well painted and drawn book. At number four, I have a book called Yojimbot from uh, Europe Comics, and this was a last-minute pickup, and I'm glad I did it because this was just a thoroughly entertaining book. It really was. I was thinking, okay, are they making fun of Usagi Yojimbo? It's basically a samurai robot in a dystopian future who ends up protecting a couple of humans from what he thinks are drones but end up uh, being some sort of uh, stormtrooper soldiers. And thoroughly entertaining. Very bloody book. Okay, at number three, we have Daredevil number 29. I've already spoken out about what I think with Elektra taking over Daredevil, so I'm just going to talk about the Matt Murdock parts where he's in prison. And he ends up getting poisoned. And then he ends up getting jumped. And it's very much a Daredevil story. It's very much an old-fashioned daredevil story where we see his inner strength as much as his outer and it just made me kind of feel good like my old frank miller daredevil loving self and the runner-up at number two is the way of x okay so this was like uh, you know what i should put in more marvel here i haven't read many marvel books and this was a one shot so i read it and i have to admit that a lot of the questions that i have in or in, as far as the X-Men are concerned, were either answered or at least addressed in uh, in this issue. As far as religion, as far as the corruption, um, they never they didn't answer those, but it definitely at least shows that somebody out there is thinking beyond anything else that's going on in the X-Men. And I did I do have to say I did enjoy that, and it surprised me at how much I enjoyed it. Alrighty, gang, and the number one comic book that I read in the month of April is a late entry, so there might be a little recency biased, but it was one of the only books that had me going, oh my gosh, that was cool. And that is Robin number one. I was surprised at this. I was not thinking I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it, period, but I did. I liked uh, the way his attitude worked for and against him. The writing was good. The whole fact that they had this flashback with Alfred kind of shows the conscience of the kid. Conscience of the kid. It's thoroughly entertaining. There's going to be a full, more uh, full review of it soon, so keep an eye out for that. And there you go, gang. 24 reviews uh, done very quickly. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more of these, I used to do this all the time, but at the end I would have a, and this is how many they had, and this is how many, and these are the winners and all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of out the board a little bit as I'm kind of getting caught up. I, I do apologize, but I still hope you enjoyed the video. 
I was really surprised at Way of X, in all honesty. This is what I wanted to see out of this. I'm, I'm working on a, if I wrote the X-Men, and I'm very glad that they addressed that because that was one of the things that um, I was going to point out. So anyway, give it a try. Give Robin a try if you haven't done that. Look for Serial and you, Jim, Yo Jimbot as well. I don't think you're uh, going to be disappointed. And Daredevil is really the only Marvel comic book that I could say is consistently good. All righty. So there you go, gang. What do you think? Let me know. What did I... Uh, put way too high? What did I put way too low? Put that in the comments. Remember, comment, 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 because uh, interaction is what helps the algorithm, and we need to at least fool YouTube into thinking that people are watching these videos. All righty, so <laughs> also don't forget to go on over to Ko-Fi or to Patreon. Drop a dollar in the till, little tip jar kind of thing. Help the channel out. Helps keep making videos for you. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that, and to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.